Hi all, this is Valdemar from Better Your Chess. In this video we're going to take a look at an instructive study by Harley Weinink. It was composed in 1917. Okay, let's get started. In this position it is wide to move and win. If you want to try and find the solution yourself, pause the video for as long as you like. I will count to three and then show you the solution. One, two, three. Now in this position, obviously, everything revolves around White's past a pawn. If he can promote it, he will win the game. Unfortunately, the Black Rook is still kicking and looking to defend. Moreover, Black is threatening to play either Rook g7 or g8 and stop the pawn dead in its tracks. Now, can White successfully fight the defending Rook? Yes, with some fine maneuvers, he can. So White starts with a7 immediately playing out his trump card, forcing black to defend very directly. There are only two ways really. There's rook g2 check and there's rook g8. Let's take a look at rook g8 first. After this move, white has a very important trick, one that's actually quite common to regular chess games also. Bishop g3 check. The theme here is eliminating the defender, in this case the rook, either by luring it away after rook g3, when white can promote to a queen, or by blocking defender after king d4 with bishop b8, and the black rook is no longer able to stop white from promoting. Okay, so that defense after a7, the one with rook g8, doesn't really work, and therefore black must try rook g2 check. Now with this check, black hopes to get his rook behind the passed pawn on the a-file, so white must get out of check and guard the a2 square at the same time. He therefore plays king b1! Exclamation mark. This precise move secures the win. By the way, king a1 with similar ideas as in the remainder of this study also wins, but for aesthetic reasons we will keep the king on the b-file. Now, the natural but mistaken king b3 would throw away the win, because now the defense with rook g8 does work, since after bishop g3 check, the rook will take the bishop with check. So, for that reason, white's king cannot really move up to the third rank at the moment. Okay, let's return to king b1. Obviously, now black has nothing better than to keep harassing white's king, and he can do so with rook g1 check. If white's king now moves up to the second rank, black will repeat with rook g2 check, and white has not made any progress since he cannot cross, uh, cross the third rank as we already saw. But now comes the star move really, and you can be really proud of yourself if you found uh, this one. It is Bishop e1 exclamation mark exclamation mark a fantastic way to defend against the check But also to lure the rook into a very unfortunate position Namely the e file from where its activity is blocked by the black king Now black really must take the bishop uh, here with check because white is again threatening to promote uh, the pawn uh, note that rook g8 still fails here to bishop g3 check. So, in this position, black has to take that bishop. And um, now, however, white can safely get out of the checks. Note what happened. He moves up with king b2. Black has to follow. Rook e2 check. King b3, the third rank, is accessible now. Rook e3 check, king b4, rook e4 check, and i after king b5, black can no longer give a check due to the position of his king or keep the passed a pawn from promoting in another way. Also, black cannot defend against the promotion indirectly with, let's say, setting up a stalemate trick, for instance, after white has promoted. Therefore, white will queen and will also win the remaining endgame of queen versus rook. Now, that is still a very difficult task, but it is a theoretical win 
and not the subject of this video. Maybe we will take a look at this particular endgame in a later stage in another video. Okay, well, with that we've come to the end of this video. Did you enjoy it? Then please consider liking, commenting or subscribing. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye!